Have you ever wondered what happened to your high school classmates? Well, Ken Dryden did. So the Hall of Fame goalie, former federal cabinet minister, minister and acclaimed author set out to find his classmates from the early 1960s. They were part of a specially selected class at Etobicoke Collegiate Institute just outside of Toronto. The other students called them the brain class. And they would stay together through high school, but after that, they went their separate ways. It's the subject of Ken Dryden's latest book. Uh, it's called The Class, A Memoir of Place, Time, and Us. And Ken Dryden joins us here in Studio 15 at the corner of Portage and Spence at the CBC building. Good morning, Ken Dryden. Nice to have you here. Thanks a lot, Pat. Glad to be here. How long did you have this idea to find people to see whatever happened to the th uh, 34 other people in that class? Right. Probably since the 80s, and and uh, and probably because I, I would get asked all the time how my path had you know come to be of going from uh, university to playing in the NHL, going to law school. It was always a puzzle to others. It was a puzzle to me, and as you get older, it becomes even more of a puzzle. How do all of these things happen? And almost all of them surprises. So I knew it would be the case with my classmates, but I didn't know what the surprise. Surprises would be. And the surprise for you, you didn't expect to play in the NHL. It just kind of happened, right? I know that yeah. you're going to go to university, the first generation to, you know, be able to go to university, do better yes. than your parents, uh, go to law school, and then get into, you didn't call it politics, you know, you, right. you called it government, not That's politics. Right. That's right. It was a surprise to you. <laughs> it was. I mean, it, it, I, I just never thought there was a connection between minor hockey playing for Humber Valley in Toronto to Saturday night, hockey night in Canada. It, and even as I got better, even as others said, you're pretty good. Um, uh, it still seemed as if it was a leap far too far. And that's why I, I, mean, I came here with a national team after university, played here with the national team so I could continue a high level of hockey and also go to law school. Let's talk about how you track down these people. Not everyone is on social media. It's certainly easier to find people now than 20, 30 years ago. But how did you manage to track them down? Well, little by little. I mean, it was. I, I, I first called somebody who I thought might have a little bit of a list. She seemed to be somebody who liked to keep track of people. And so she had about 12 or 13 names. Um, I followed up and probably seven or eight of them, the, the phone numbers were still good. So then you you know, you, you contact them. They're bound to know one or two others who are bound to know one or two others. And gradually I found all but, all but one. So I found, you know, 33 others um, and uh, um, six, six from our class had passed away. And uh, but I also found family members of five of those six. And then we started talking. And you spoke to them, even though these people weren't around anymore. That's right. So there's 35 in the class. I understand you found 21 girls, 14 boys, 26 in all. And this wasn't just, uh, hey, how's it going? This was mm -hmm. hours and hours of interviews over several months. Yeah. Well, it was actually over a couple of years. And and it, it I, th I thought it would be two or three hours with each person one-on-one. -on -one. But of course, once you get into it, then you start to puzzle. I mean, you, that, that none of us really knows the, you know, the, the answers to any of these things. And, 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 and so we're puzzling, why, why did we go in that direction? Why did I feel about that? Why did I make that choice? Maybe I really didn't have a choice at that particular time. Um, what effect did it have getting married at that age or having kids at that age or whatever, whatever? And so it was a joint puzzling exercise. And so in the end, I think on average, I spoke to all of them 12 to 14 hours or so over a couple of years. And one of the things you found is that no one's lives turned out how they thought they would. Yeah, no. I mean, and I, I think that's I think that's all of us. I mean, yeah. that that even even those and from our class, even those who in and when they're in elementary school, you know, they were going to be teachers in high school, you know, they were going to be teachers and they became teachers. But they became teachers in a different kind of way, in in a school that they might not have intended to be in, in in a, in a changing Canada, in a much more diverse Canada. What's a, in a classroom that was very different than the classrooms that they were in um, in their own uh, uh, schooling, you know. Th and and so the question then is, is that how do you feel about that? How do you deal with that? How do you adapt with that? How do you come to see the country? I mean, the whole idea of the book was, in many ways, it was how. How did we get from there to here? But it, again, in order to tell that story, you discover that really it's a story of 
how did we get from there to here as a country as well? And so it's a, it's a parallel story. It's our own individual lives, but it's also in the context in which we live them. Now, a theme, and you just touched on this, but a theme in the book is almost how, you know, none of you lived your lives and lived the lives that maybe you expected. But this was post-war and this was yeah. the world's at our yeah. fingertips yeah. time for you folks. And there's a quote in the book, what kind of future would be worthy of us? Yeah. Because you were going to go to university, everything was ahead of you. Um, how does that, you know, with, with, with that kind of feeling... What was that like to to have that at your fingertips yeah. as you're just entering, you know, your your late teens and early twenties? I mean, it was exciting. I mean that that almost none of our parents went to university. My parents didn't, and and their dream for us was to for us to go to university. And 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 the thing that that you know that so here here is the, they they were born. Most of them in the, between 1910 and 1920. Their parents lived through the First World War. They lived through the flu epidemic. My, my, my grandfather on, on my mother's side died in the, in the flu epidemic. Almost all of our parents went into their formative years of their beginning years of work uh, during the Depression. Then, and, and so they were affected by that. Then into the Second World War. All of a sudden, the Second World War is over. You look around and all these possibilities that are there. A country that is about to be made. What is it going to be made to be? What, what can it be? And they would look around at us and they would say, my heavens, if we were able to create this world with, with, as high school dropouts, what will our sons and daughters be able to do? And so there was that sense of excitement, sex, a sense of hope and expectation. And at the same time, as time went on, a sense of obligation really is, is that, you know, what is worthy of this kind of an opportunity? We've got in our final 90 seconds, I just want to ask, is there one story that blew you away? I mean, I'm sure, you know, out of all the people you talk to, but is there one that really stood out to you? Boy, that's a hard one. Um, I, I, I'm probably not answering, the, but I'll just tell you what comes to mind at this point. The thing that, that, that struck me as I'm, as I'm writing this from there to here story and, 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 and getting towards the present, getting towards the here time, then all of a sudden... I, you know, I get to the end of the here time, but the book isn't over. It means I'm still alive. I didn't die with, 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 with putting the final period to the final sentence. And so then the question is, what's the new there? And that's what all of us face now. We're in our mid-70s, and, and we've come to this point of now, in the rest of our time, whatever, however long that is, what is our new there? And that all of a sudden, I mean, that was a stunning moment. It's like, oh, my God, what do I write now? Right. And, uh, and it became the puzzle again for all of us. Well, enjoy your time in Winnipeg. You're at an event tonight that I'll just mention right away. But Ken Dryden, thanks for coming in uh, live this morning on Information Radio. Thanks a lot, Pat.